Well, for years, we would do this search, and we could find literally hundreds of web analytics vendors, consultants, all sorts of people, right? And they never had any relevance, right? Some of you may have seen it, okay? But anyway, this is a, this is a brief disconnect. So as you see, Helium was one of the few who actually had a good set. And they actually have web analytics consulting. That's what you expect. When you go to web analytics consulting, you don't expect to see a tool. You don't expect to, you don't expect to see just a white paper. You need to be reminded that consulting was exactly what you were looking for. Right? Web analytics consulting is a query that isn't about web analytics. And it's not about web analytics tools. Although it might be. Do we know whether web analytics consulting is about a tool or about an analysis? No. But we don't, but what we do know is that it's about consulting. Victoria's Secret does this really, really well. In fact, they're one of the sites that consistently does this well. If you see, they don't match it up perfectly. We think they don't do it by really good process because it's not always perfect, but they get a really good idea of matching up offers and you know, even the pictures. It's not the identical pictures, right? This one and this one, right? But you can see it's the same model, right? And it's a similar, similar dress and similar pose. And so there's a continuity that keeps you engaged. When you go one further, she's still there. And take a look, they really do this well. It's not just about the brand, the image, the offer, the category, there are even the products that they do, right? Carries forward the scent. And this is really, really impressive because they're one of the few companies that does this extremely, extremely well. Which brings me to another one of my pet peeves, which is back when Jacob Nielsen wrote this book, Homepage Usability, his very worst book, okay? Um, no, no, he's, he's a brilliant guy. And yes, I know it's pronounced Jacob, but nobody pronounces it that way, right? We're in Texas, too. Um, but anyway, when he wrote this book, uh, it was because everybody was arguing about the homepage. If you remember seven, eight years ago, with the homepage, what are we gonna put on the homepage, right? And it's still a, a pretty huge political battle in the companies. And he wrote this page, and I, I, I remember, because if you look at the Amazon review, one of the things I say is, where did this guy get off saying that you should never use an exclamation point on a homepage? Really? Right? Can it never be done? Really? <laughs> and we have the same kind of focus today with landing page optimization. Okay? I know Tim was here a couple of months back, right? Tim's a personal friend. Um, as are most of the people, both in the web analytics community <laughs> and in the optimization community. However, they still haven't gotten the message that we gave 10 years ago. It is not about one page. Landing pages, unless they're the only page that the visitor is going to visit, are simply not that important. It's not the squeeze page, it's not the landing page, right? There's a path that they need to go through. Tell me what you can check out on in just one page. Are you just looking for an email address? Yeah, cool, maybe that'll work great. But it's a really, really short path, and it's probably a very <coughs> low value sale. So let's not get hung up on landing pages. Persuasion is a lot more complex than that. It goes page to page, and what you want to make sure is that you get people to follow the sentence each page. Here's a good example, okay? The Geico people clearly understand branding, okay? They're clearly really, really good market. And it's really easy to click on their banner, and it says, Geico could save you hundreds on your car insurance. Would you like cream or sugar with that? Now here's the kicker, this is, this is the beautiful part. Just fill in your zip code, mate. How can you say no to that? <laughs> right, that's easy. So I put in 78759. Isn't that what you do? Tell me what you expect. What, what, what's going to be there? A quote. What else might be there? More information about how I might get a quote fairly simply, right? What can they really tell me? Could they tell me the people in 78759, maybe they got 
an average of a 10% or did you know this? Or did you know? I mean, they could do any of these things. Now, how many of you are IT people? Okay. The rest of you, I'm counting on you to defend me. Um, <laughs> who do you think designed this page? <laughs> Okay, this is what we call the business prevention unit's <laughs> contribution to this market gap. Okay, first, zero percent? Really? Is that some techie geek's impression of how to make me feel good about what I've done? I, I just put in my zip code. Give me some credit. <laughs> Tell me I did 10 percent. Okay? Also, I gave you a zip code. Can you give me a little bit of information? And who's this nice lady? I mean, she has a smile, but I, you know, how many of you recognize her from like, uh, you know, stock photography? Right? <laughs> Where's the gecko? Where's this fun, nice, you, you know, human feeling image? And how about a testimonial? How about something that makes you feel better? And also, is that one but ugly form? <laughs> Really, could they get my, now that they have my zip code, could they get my email address and just one more piece of information so that even if I abandon it, they can contact me again? You see where I'm going here, right? It's not enough to think of the next page. It's the next page, the next page, all the way till they get to the page, that's the money page. And this goes no matter where you start from, right? If you start on the search side, if you start right on the page search, how you target, what you do makes a big difference. So you have to think of search the same way, right? When somebody builds, a, when somebody uses a keyword or a key phrase, that's not what they mean. That's simply how they phrase some query that they have in their mind. You need to anticipate what it actually means. And the tighter that you can get to what their intention was, the better off you're gonna convert. I mean, to give you a quick example, and I don't wanna go into huge detail on this one, but essentially, just with this example right here, which is for bully bones, they went from a cost per action of $29 to a cost per action of $18. And cost per action is really sort of how to measure it, not the click-through rate, like who cares, right? It's how much it costs, the targeting gets better. And again, it's a question of focusing on what the intention was, what the relevance was. Next thing is, they make a strong first impression. Now this guy was hacked recently, which is sort of interesting, but LifeLock, he gives away his social security Number. How strong is that? Right? It's a great story. It's engaging. It gets you interested. It says, hey, pay attention. Right? They appeal to multiple segments. I could go through literally an hour about why Mint does this so exceptionally well. Someone invited to actually go look at Mint. They do it really, really well. Okay? <coughs> so I'm going to show you some other examples of how you can appeal more segments. First thing is, you need to understand why I'm talking about segments. A few minutes ago, I talked about how I really don't like averages for conversion rates. And there's a couple of reasons I don't like averages. First of all, because people quote averages and they don't quote a standard deviation, okay? Which means it's virtually useless. Second, they quote averages and they rarely quote seasonality in it. Right, so this is not a good way to adjust it. Averages are just that, they're like the lazy man's number. Okay, um, if that's really what you're basing your decisions on, it needs to get a little stronger than that. And the other part of it is, because of the way that web traffic gets built, okay, it comes from multiple sources, right? Not everybody had the same intention, not everybody came from the same source, not everybody was at the same stage in the buying process. Not everybody had the same personality type. Not everybody was a customer before. Yet, you get what I'm saying? You see the ways that we can think about customers differently, right? And so it's each segment that I'm concerned about, and I'm looking to get the aggregate of each segment, right? So if one segment converts at 0.1% with some sort of standard deviation, and the next segment converts at 3%, and the next segment converts at four and a half percent, and the next one converts to 1.1, right? And I'm optimizing by segment instead of for an average, I will do better overall because I'm catering to traffic the way that actually comes to the site. 